All right, we are moving more into the study of functions. Uh, today, we are talking about something called function notation and just kind of explaining how these different notations mean different things so that we could all be using the same exact language and understanding what different symbols and whatnot mean. The only issue with, as I'm going over these notes, is that this is the set of notes after I filled everything out. And I kind of jumped around, um, and I'll try to explain that. But um, I might be telling you to ignore certain things as we're at that point of the notes. So this first part says, the following are two graphs representing a dog's distance from a pole while it waits uh, for its owner on two different days. Answer the following questions. So you can see the first one, it walks a little bit away from the pole. It started away from the pole. Uh, gets, it looks like it probably, if, it, if the dog is like my old dog, it probably walked to its farthest point at some point in both of those graphs. And it looks like the highest point is at uh, five feet. So I'm guessing that that leash is probably five feet. And then it kind of meandered its way back. So uh, let's just focus on the purple writing at first. It says, is the graph on day one a function? Explain. And the answer is yes, because it passes the vertical line test. Uh, the other way you could think of this is an input of a certain number of seconds can't have two different distances. You can't be in two places at one time. Uh, on day two, is that a function? And the answer is yes. While that first part, he kind of runs away and it looks like it's pretty darn close to vertical, it's not actually vertical. So this does pass the vertical line test as well. And that is going to be a function as well. So then we're going to answer these questions. The first one says, what is the output on day one for an input of 60? Ignore that black writing at first. If you look at the graph for an input of 60 and you go up where that dot is, you can go over to the left and you see that the output would be a distance of four feet. For the next one on part D, it says, how about on day two? For an input of 60, what is the output? And when we check out this one, an input of 60 has an output of four as well. There are two different functions but they are both gonna have the same output on that input of 60. The next one says, what is the output on day one with an input of 120? So you can go to 120. Input is going to be the independent variable, which is down on the x-axis, and the y-axis is gonna be the dependent, which is the output. So when we go to 120 <clears throat> for seconds and we go up, that is about <clears throat> 2.5. Lastly, it says on day one, what input gives an output of 1.5? So if you look at where 1.5 is, the only time that that graph is going to be the dog being at one and a half foot away is going to be at time zero. So that would be an input of zero. We'll come back to this black writing in just a second. The next thing that we did was we looked at these three different equations. And I asked the students without that pink or the, the purple writing being in there, I said, are these functions? <clears throat> and basically what the student said was they didn't know. It might be a function, it might not be. They're, they have no idea. So I drew the graph of what the first one looked like. And at that point they said, yes, it passes the vertical line test, so it is a function. But they didn't know that before when it was just in like a normal equation form. The next one, once again, they did not know if it was a function or not until I went over and drew it. And then when they saw it didn't pass the vertical line test, they said no. And the last one, they did not know until I made the graph. And then once I had the graph, um, they saw it pass the vertical line test and they said yes. So there is an issue here. Um, number one, if you're looking at that first thing we did with those graphs, this seems super inefficient. Like I'm using a lot of words. What is the output on day one if the input is 60? There's just too many words there. And then on the second part, when we were looking at those equations and trying to figure out if they're functions, it's not super efficient to have to graph it every single time to find out if it's a function. So when there is a need, mathematicians are going to come up with something that fills that need. So the need was, there's gotta be a way that we can denote that something is a function without having to actually check if it's a function. My explanation of this is the way that you can find out if something has if someone has their doctorate is they no longer usually go by Mrs. or Mr. They go by doctor. So, uh, for example, we've got the prince or the vice principal who is used to be Mrs. Vasakis. She got her doctorate. Now she's Dr. Vasakis. You don't have to guess. She goes by Dr. Vasakis. So you know that she's got her doctorate. Now, is she able to go by Mrs. Vasakis if she wants to? Yeah, that's just not being as specific as we can about her. So if she goes by Mrs. Vasakis, we have no idea if she is actually a, if she has her doctorate or if she does not. But when she goes by doctor, 
then we know that um, she it does have her doctorate. So there has to be some kind of notation to show that this is a function. So when you look at this box that says function notation, what they do is instead of saying y, they say f of x. That means function of x. So y is determined by uh, what x is, because x is your independent and y is your dependent. So instead of saying y, they just say f of x. That f in the parentheses in x is saying f of x, meaning y, what used to be there, is called f of x. The beauty of this is when it is in that form, you know it is definitely going to be a function. So that is one reason you would do it. Instead of saying y equals blah, 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 if you say f of x, you don't have to graph it. You already know it's a function. Now, if it does say y equals, that doesn't guarantee it's not a function. It might be just like Mrs. Vasakis might have her doctorate, but we don't know yet. The other reason why this function is important, look at the middle of the box there. When you say f of x, this gives information. The x there is going to be your input. So when we say like f of 2, that is saying what is y when x is 2? So f of x, the x part or whatever number you put in where that is, is your input. Don't forget, f of x is, in most cases, a way of saying y. Um, so if we go back up, take a look at that first part that we went over. When it says an input of 60, what is the output? A way that we can say that is f of 60. f of 60 is saying what is y when x is 60, and it equals 4. Instead of using f of x again, take a look. The first graph we called f of x because it's the first function. We have another function. Wait, we already used f of x. So we go to the next letter in the alphabet, which is g, g of x. And then if there's another function, we call it uh, f, g, h of x. Um, so you can use the different letters there to differentiate between different functions. On e, it says, what is the output when the input is 120? That is f of 120. f of 120 is saying, what is the output with an input of uh, 120? And we find out that it's 2.5. And the last one, they tell us the output is 1.5. We don't know the input. So I say f of x equals 1.5. And we would know that that could also be written as, um, well, that, that it actually should be f of, uh, let's see, f of 0 equals 1.5. Because the only issue here is if you say f of x equals 1.5, then that seems like it is y equals 1.5, which is a horizontal line. So really, I should have written that as f of 0 equals 1.5. Okay, let's take a look down at the bottom here. On the bottom, I say, find out if this is actually a function. If it is, make the equation much more specific. It is a function because it passes the vertical line test. So rather than saying y, I'm gonna say f of x. f of x equals 0.25x squared minus 3x plus two. Uh, that is the way that we can denote that it is definitely a function. Before, we didn't know if it was a function or not. Next, it's asking, what is f of zero? That is basically saying, what is the output when the input is zero? What is the y when the x is zero? And if you look at this graph, the y would be two when x is zero. You can also write this out as a point zero comma two. The next one is basically saying, what is the y when x is 10? So what is it? When you look at 10, it drops down to negative two. So uh, f of 10 equals negative two. That would be 10 negative two. And the last one, is saying, what is, if f of x equals uh, negative seven, then what is the x that makes this true? And if we look to figure out where is the graph going to have a y value of negative seven, the only time in this case that it has a y value of negative seven is when x is six. So is f of six equals negative seven. When we move on here, we're taking a look at comparing different things. Uh, they're gonna say, uh, is f of zero bigger or is f of four bigger? So that is just saying, is the graph going to have a higher y value at 0 for x or at uh, 4 for x? And when we check out where the graph is at 0 and 4, we find out it's higher at 4. Then they ask, which one is going to have a bigger value, f of 2 or f of 4? Or sorry, f of 2 or f of 5? And we look at this, f of 2 is going to have the same y value as f of 5. So they are going to be equal. The next one is f of 3 and f of 7. Which one's going to be bigger? f of 3 is going to be bigger because f of 7 is after it's gone down. And the last part just says, what's going to be bigger, some number or the next number? And in this case, not always, but in this case, you don't know. Because if we're talking going from 0 to 1, then uh, the, the 1 is going to be bigger. The, the t plus 1 is going to be bigger. But if you have like if you have t being 2 and t being 2 plus 1, which is 3, they're going to be the same because it is flat there. And if you go from 6 to 7, then uh, 6 is going to be bigger. So it kind of depends. 
uh, on that one for this. But if this was just a line going up from left to right, the f of t plus 1, meaning an x value that is slightly bigger than the original, is going to give a bigger y value. Two, I have two more parts here. Uh, on this next one, it is basically asking you for this situation. If you can figure out what each one of these things mean, meaning you want to put it into a uh, function notation. So when it says that is 2010 and there were uh, 296 million um, smartphone users, then that is 10 years after 2000. That'd be f of 10 equals 296.6 million smartphone users. The next one says in 2015, that'd be an input of 15, 15 years after 2000. And there's 1.86 billion. You need to know that 1.86 billion means 1,860 million. That's why I got that. The next one says, my is curious about the value of P of T equals 1,000. Uh, what would uh, the value of T tell my about the situation? Um, the value of t is going to tell you the year that when it was 1 billion users. And the next one says is for a possible value of t here. So I'm not quite sure if it's asking the value. Th this is basically saying that that is in 2004. That is a possible value of t in general, but that is not going to be the value. So make sure you're listening to what I say. If you're interpreting that question to ask is uh, 2004 or is four a possible value that is going to get 1000, the answer is no, because um, at four years since 2000, you're not up at a billion. If this question is just asking in general, can four be a value of T, then yes, that would mean 2004, but two different meanings. Um, on this one right here, you were supposed to be making sense of all these things. So it's saying the temperature of water inside of a pot after t minutes um, on the stovetop can be described as a function. Why can it be a function? Because it can't have two different temperatures at any time. They say w is going to be the temperature, t is going to be the number of minutes. So they want to know what is w of 0 equals 72. That just means at time equals 0, it's going to be 72 degrees. Next, it says w of 5, which means the temperature at 5 minutes is going to be greater than w of 2, the temperature at 2 minutes. So it is increasing temperature. They then tell you that W of 10, which is the temperature at 10 minutes, is going to be 212 degrees. Next, it says W of 12, meaning the temperature at 12 minutes is equal to the temperature at 10 minutes. Next, it is going to be a W of 15 is greater than W of 30. That means that between 15 and 30 minutes, it is going to be decreasing in temperature. And then it says that W of zero is going to be less than W of 30. That just says over the whole period of 30 minutes, it needs to be increasing temperature. So it has to be over 72 degrees. They ask you to put all this stuff into a graph, and you can see the graph that I have here. Um, the graph that I have is starting at 72. It's going up to uh, 212 degrees at, uh, let's see, 10 minutes, and then it stays at 212 and then it comes down a bit, but doesn't get as low as it was before. All right, let's go ahead and go over the homework. Uh, these ones mess me up a lot, not because I don't understand it, but just it is very easy to mess these ones up because they're talking about the amount of time after midnight. I actually messed this one up twice. So this is the correct answer here. It is saying F, is, uh, F gives the temperature in degrees Celsius, T is the hours after midnight. So originally when I saw uh 1 30 p.m i said oh 30 minutes is half an hour so that is 1.5 and i thought it was b and i said that's silly i just realized i messed up it must be c because that is 13 30 one uh or at 1 30 p.m is actually 13 hours past but 30 does not mean uh half of an hour so then i finally got the correct answer which was d D is going to be F of 13.5, which is 13.5 hours past midnight, is going to have a temperature of 20 degrees. Um, on this one right here, it is asking what each one of these things mean. This is uh, water inside of a bathtub after a certain amount of time in minutes. So the first one is there is no water in at zero minutes. The next one is after seven minutes, there's going to be more water than there is after one minute. The next one is at nine minutes, there is going to be a depth of 11 inches. Um, <clears throat> the next one is going to be the depth of the water at 10 minutes is going to be the same as the depth at 22 minutes. 
Uh, and the last one is the depth at 20 minutes is going to be greater than the, the depth at 40 minutes. So it seems like there is no water. It started filling up. They got it to where they wanted, kept it there for a while, and then drained it out. The next one, the function f gives the temperature in degrees Celsius, t hours after midnight. Uh, use the function notation for the following. Uh, the temperature at 12 p.m. Once again, I accidentally was thinking 12 p.m. was midnight. Nope, that's 12 hours after, so that's f of 12. Um, the temperature was the same at 9 a.m. as 4 p.m., so that would be f of 9 equals f of 16, because 4 p.m. is actually 16 hours past midnight. It was warmer at 9 a.m. than at 6. Uh, that would be f of 9 is greater than f of 6. The temperature at 9 is uh, warmer than the temperature at 6 hours past midnight. And then this one was a little confusing. It says sometime after midnight. The way that I said that was f of 0, which is midnight, and then I added something to it. I called it x, and then I said x couldn't be 0, and x should be. I should have an addition here. x needs to be greater than 0. So uh, instead of that saying x is not 0, go ahead and write that as x is greater than 0, meaning that it is any number greater than 0, and that is going to be 24. Um, Okay, the next one, select all points that are the same as this. You should know that f of 2 equals negative 4 means 2 comma negative 4. 5, 3.4 is 5 comma 3.4. On this one right here, uh, write three statements that are true about the following. I said that at a time of 0, it was about 1.5. I said that uh, f of 60, meaning at 60 seconds, it was 4. And then I said that f of 0, which was the, the distance in feet at zero seconds was going to be less than at 160 seconds. This last part right here, you had to figure out which one is a function by testing it using the ver uh, vertical line test. And if it is a function, write it in function notation. So the first one passes the vertical line test, so I changed the y to be an f of x. Um, just know that since there's an x in the equation, that's why it's f of x. If it was y equals g minus 1 cubed minus 1, then it wouldn't be f of x. It would be f of g because g is in the equation. Here we have an x in the equation, so it's f of x. The next one does not pass the vertical line test, so it is not going to be a function, and I'm not going to write it into function notation. Hope that helped. Thanks for watching.